Hi and greetings viewers, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Darp in the Mirror, a panorama of images capturing you and New Zealand and the world around us. Now Beckham fever completely swept New Zealand and the whole of the nation. Now it just demonstrates, even though the result didn't go in our way, the Galaxy obviously won 4-1, but it just demonstrates how if a nation gets behind the game and not the result, what can be achieved. Hopefully soccer's profile will be raised immensely in New Zealand. Now we have a fantastic lineup. In the first segment of the show, we showcase Deborah Manning, renowned for her four-year defense of Ahmed Zawi. Now she's commenting on the new immigration bill which has just been put into parliament. Now what we're focusing on here is, should the culture of deceit and collecting information secretively be what we really want going forward? Now putting forward the case of Zawi, is this how we want to progress? Now she has likened this bill and parliament and forewarned saying that this is just like playing with fire. So let's present Deborah Manning and what she has to say on this very fiery issue. The immigration bill is before Parliament and now in front of the Parliamentary Select Committee for consideration. It is hoped the Select Committee will look at the proposals very carefully, particularly those concerning secret information. High-profile lawyer Deborah Manning says that secret information is against the principles of justice and compared weaving a web of secrecy to playing with fire in uncharted territory. She said that, in her opinion, it is simply not the New Zealand way. As part of meeting its obligations to the United Nations, New Zealand accepts 750 refugees annually, drawn from various countries. Ahmed Zawi came to New Zealand in December 2002 and was granted refugee status. But in March 2003, a security risk certificate was issued against him. Thus began his painful four and a half year ordeal, walking under the shadows of classified and secret information. Director of Security, NZSIS, Warren Tucker, while withdrawing the security risk certificate against Mr. Zawi, admitted back in September this year that the review process under Part 4A of the Immigration Act has not worked well from the NZSIS's point of view. In particular, he says, I regret the length of time it has taken. He further added that this was the first case of its type in New Zealand. Much of the experience gained about using classified information in this kind of process has been incorporated into the immigration bill now before Parliament. In the aftermath of the case, in hindsight, how do you feel about the entire episode? In hindsight, I can say that, well, I feel very relieved on behalf of Mr Zowie. Um, I'm very pleased at the outcome, but I am also concerned that this case could be repeated again in the sense that classified or secret information is looking at being introduced wholesale into the immigration system, including for refugees. And so Mr Zowie has received, I think, justice in New Zealand, but I'm concerned that many others may miss out. Uh, what exactly is uh, leading you to those thoughts? I mean, any specific incident? Well, yes, there is an immigration bill before Parliament which has been considered by a select committee and I certainly hope that the Select Committee will look at the proposals very carefully, particularly those concerning secret information. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is that sort of thing completely was alien to New Zealand immigration system? Well, secret information is completely new to the New Zealand legal system. It's new to the common law system entirely because justice is supposed to be about um, openness and fairness and being able to know what you're accused of and by who. And so secret information is completely against all of these principles. And so this is really playing with fire, if you like, and we're in uncharted territory and I just... It's not the New Zealand way, in my opinion. 
I mean, what's the justification for the government to go in for uh, such a, a route? Well, there's been no objective basis um, to justify these proposals other than vague notions of security. But New Zealand is far, far out of step with any other countries who face direct security concerns. I mean, like... Uh New Zealand is not, you mean to say, it is not in the front line to the war on terror? Well, that's right. Well, our geopolitical situation is quite different to other countries. But even that aside, we're still well out of step in terms of our, our measures are far more extreme than other countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia and even the United States. They don't use secret information in this way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, some of the... Uh, legislation that has come into effect, especially pertaining to TSA, Terrorism uh, Suppression Act. Do you think it is also some sort of uh, an offshoot to the one that you were talking about? Well, it's all part of the same. It's all part of the same picture. Uh, the, the use of security language to justify um, a creeping uh, invasion into people's um, privacy rights and uh, natural justice rights. And I think that the New Zealand courts will be very careful um, before you know w- when they're dealing with these cases. But of course, as we know, uh, we won't have cases like that um, anytime soon because of the Solicitor General's decision not to charge under the Terrorism Suppression Act. I see. But there is already a system in place with the Immigration Department that uh, whenever a person is leaving and coming into the country, there is some sort of a record being kept already. Well, there are all sorts of concerns being raised by the migrant communities about invasions into their privacy, about being stopped in and out of airports, about problems and hold-ups with their applications and they're not being told why. There is certainly um, an increase in the use of secret information and secret reports um, and it certainly is of concern. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that the New Zealand government, if it embarks and determines uh, in that direction, then, you know, it is playing with fire. I mean, what sort of ramifications, what sort of uh, consequences do you envisage <coughs> in the future? Well, there are all sorts of consequences. There's international criticism, there's criticism from the judiciary, but also it's going to affect, um, it could affect um, things like proper settlement into New Zealand by migrant communities, people fe- feeling marginalised, people feeling unfairly treated. Um, it's also affecting people's ability to reunite with their families. There's going to be all sorts of ripple effects um, when you start, um, you know, treating people unfairly. Mm-hmm. Well, you also mentioned just a while back uh, that, you know, keeping uh, even the judiciary is uh, of that view. But uh, with the inception of TSA coming into force, the, ju- the judiciary is completely kept out of the picture. Well, the, uh, the, it is always of concern when the courts are kept out of any kind of legal process or process affecting someone's human rights. And I uh, certainly know from overseas examples that the courts will usually try and find a way to be involved in justice issues. Why can't the New Zealand government uh, like follow the route taken by some of the uh, Central American uh, governments wherein they have uh, amended uh, many of the provisions uh, that are attached to the security uh, you know, bills or measures. Well, I mean, I can't speak for the New Zealand government, but I certainly do not understand why our government is being so much more extreme in its responses to security matters at the present time. Coming up next... One of the reasons why Dick Hubbard is no longer mayor and Bruce Huck is no longer deputy mayor is because the uh, public didn't like the way that they'd increased rates by 30% in the three years that they were in, uh, in office. Next week. The world's most amazing bridge, a wonderful piece of architecture, a heroic bridge, a great icon for, for good design and, and uh, yeah, the city of Sales. And by putting that together, we can sort of go forward to the rest of the world and say we are the pure New Zealand, we are you know, thinking forward, we're putting these great architectural statements forward and it's, you know, it's, it's going to attract people to the city.